Hi, I'm Uncle Mark. My office is using the microwave and it just stopped working, so I thought I'll take a look at it, see what's wrong with it. Hoping it's just a fuse, because it was working and then it just did nothing. No clock, no nothing. First of all, I thought let's make sure that there's power at the outlets. I've got one of these little power checker things. You could always use a bedroom lamp or something, plug it in. Anyway, this power there. So, made sure I took out all the breakable parts, that glass platter, just in case. Made sure it's unplugged from the wall. There's a bunch of these little screws holding the top on. They are special little little screws. I'm going to put skippable chapters there because there might be some things that take me a little longer than they should and you can just skip to the next part. I don't know how many of them there are, but they're special. They call them tamper-proof torque screws, I guess. So you can use a special bit. It's a TT tamper-proof, I guess, T15. Yours might be a little different size. They usually come in a set. I'll show you why they're called tamper-proof if you have your normal torque bits. So right in the middle, they've got a little peg, or I don't know what you want to call it, a little finger, which stops the normal torque bits from going in there. So these ones have a little hole in them so that they'll fit over that. So this one's got a bunch of, they just go around, take a look around the back. These didn't have any on the bottom, but there was one on the side. And then just pop the lid off. And I'll show later on how this goes back on, but it's got a special lip along the front. You can kind of see it here. And it's going to fit in a little groove on the front of the microwave and around the sides as well, but along there. Just in case I forget to tell you that later. Let's take a look at this baby. So right there is where there's the main fuse. And in my case, it's blown. Like it's hard to see here. But it's actually busted in half. Oop, there goes one side of it. Try and get the other side out without cutting myself. There it goes. So this one, <laughs> I was shocked, it's black. Literally broken half. So they're 120 volt, either probably a 15 or a 20 amp. This was a 20 amp. You have to remember, a 12 volt car fuse will not work. I went to try and find these and everybody kept sending me to the car section. It's like, those are 12 volt. I need a 120 volt or 125 volt or whatever it's going to be called. This is interesting. I noticed on the panel on actually the back of the microwave, it said this one needed to be a 20 amp. But I guess how long it is is the next problem. Here's a warning here. This capacitor, lots of power. So I'm going to use some insulated handle uh, pliers. I'm going to short them out just to make sure that all the power is out of it because it could give a person quite the jolt. Hate to get hurt. So back up here is uh, where it goes. There was no markings as to what it's supposed to be. I found this when I went to actually a plumbing place of all places. I went to a whole bunch of places. No one had it. No one had it. Somebody suggested a plumbing place. And this actually fell down too far. I didn't push it very hard, and then I was a little confused, and I'm holding the camera, and I can't really see what I'm doing. Oh, took it too far. So I had to pry it back up. And then I found out, no, it doesn't kind of want to sit where it's supposed to. Of course, I can't see what I'm doing there. There we go. That's where it should, it should sit, and it's just flopping around. Look at that. It's like, really? Did I bend it that easily? Or is it that cheap? Well, Man, this microwave isn't even that old. Had other problems with it. I had, to, I had the inside light go out, you know, so you can see if your food's cooking or not. So I did a video on that. And that went as well as it could as well. <laughs> that worked actually for quite some time. I actually put, uh, couldn't get the right bulb at the right time. There you go. Anyway, by squeezing those together, it gave it a little better contact. So let's try her out. So this fuse is supposed to be similar. A little different type in that the glass isn't clear. Plugged it in. Turned on. Whew. Good. Open the door. 
and that was it. The light came on once, slow motion. You see the fan in the background also had come on just for a second, so it must all powered up, but something is broken. Anyway, I'm going to unplug it and we'll uh, just test this fuse just to show you if you have the right kind of a equipment to be able to test them. And, you know, because that's the next thing. Sometimes you can't tell. By the way, if you like what you're seeing, can you give me the thumbs up? That way YouTube will be able to know that I'm doing a good job. Let's take a look at this now. What I'm using is uh, just checking for continuity. This should beep. I've got it set on that function. Most test meters will do that. You can set for continuity. And if it uh, if the power can go all the way through it, see it does when you tap the other side there. So I guess it's time for me to buy another microwave. I don't have the skills to go any further. Uh, for you that, you know, maybe your fuse did work and now it's running. Uh, to put the lid back, I mentioned at the start of this video that there's a little lip that goes all along the front part of this. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a double lip and it clips onto the white part of this. So I don't have a close-up, but if you try and put yours on there, you'll see the point. And it goes all the way around along the sides as well, so you may not want to push it that far in. If the fuse idea did work, your what did that cost you? Maybe ten dollars or something for a fuse? Five bucks maybe. One thing you could do is uh, if it doesn't, save the good fuse. There's those torque bits again, or torque screws. Save the fuse, put it away somewhere in case the new microwave ever blows up. Normally though, when they stop working, there's a reason. Not sure what the reason was. Again, this microwave isn't that old. I don't know if it's five years old. It was a cheaper microwave. Guess you get what you pay for. If you're new to the channel or just stumbled across this, I usually don't do uh, electronic repairs. I usually do vehicle repairs. Uh, stick around to the end, you'll get to see who I am, and I'll show you a way that you can maybe see some other videos as well. Maybe you can fix your own vehicle one time. Save a few bucks there. And there we go. So in my case, uh, it was a fuse, but it was something worse. Hopefully the fuse idea maybe fixed yours or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on why it's blown the fuse, just like in your car or a breaker in your house. Something's overpowered, overloaded. Please give me the thumbs up if you haven't already. If you like the video, you can subscribe down in the corner. It'll be for more uh, automotive videos. Uh, I don't do too many repairs and this kind of stuff. This isn't my thing, uh, but I will make a playlist right up here. Above uh, the blue circle there, you'll see the yellow flashing arrow and it'll bring you to uh, another video or a couple more on microwaves. Plus, if you go to the very end of the video, you can hit uh, the actual channel and check that out. Hope you and your family are doing well. You stay safe. Bye-bye for now from Uncle Mark. Please subscribe and you'll get all the notifications. It's easy. The little dog will show you how. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Mm-hmm. Set the pride back up. And then it didn't want, to, didn't want to sit where it's supposed to.
sure. As for the microwave, I'm not going to... Uh, hmm?